This is supposed to be a man of God, but yet he's told the whole world that 26 people died in his church when he's no, he, nobody died. He's a liar. Let's go, Frank. Let's go polygraph right now. I've got a man in San Antonio. The comment you just made, knowing my 14-year-old daughter's laying You're a liar, Frank. You're a filthy liar, Frank. You know? You're a demon, Frank. You should be able to provide the evidence more than anybody on this planet. This guy should be able to provide evidence right of a death that happened at this church. We've had to learn to deal with these sick fuckers that are saying this stuff, that are out there claiming that we're not real people, claiming that we're actors. We don't give a shit what you say. We're not afraid. It's a horrible thing to think that 17 children got murdered. But it's even more disturbing to think that the government would do something like this and present it as a real event when it's not. A lot of today's hoaxers are mentally ill, and they think that what they see on the web um, and TV is just a reality show. And so if it's a reality show, then everything is staged and everyone is an actor. This isn't a fucking conspiracy. This is real life, and people are fucking dying. I got a text from Lauren that said, code red, active shooter, I love you, mom. I was holding my like, really close friend Sam Deitch's hand, and I remember something she just kept on saying over and over, I don't want to be another number. I don't want to be a number. We're going to be another number. She knew that at least three of her friends had died. She wouldn't know for the next 36 hours whether or not another one of her friends died who actually did. Knowing that as a, a big brother, you can't do anything about that just made me so mad. I figured I would use my speech and debate skills and my, my journalism skills, I guess you could say, to go out and speak. And my parents didn't want me to go. I told David, don't go back over there. He disappeared a few minutes, he comes back. He's got the camera, gets on his bike. I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm going to get my story. And he took off. David Hogg. David Hogg. David Hogg. David Hogg. David Hogg is here with me now. When I first started doing interviews, I wasn't like nervous or anything because I've done many interviews before with our own TV program and I'd been doing that for the past like four years basically. And I was just pissed off. I wanted to make sure that something like this wouldn't happen again. My name is Tony Mead and I am an independent journalist. How I'm related here is that this is in my backyard. Did people die? I don't know. But I, I don't think that what happened here is a genuine calamity. There's something perpetrated here that defies logic, right? That, that I think was uh, something done deceitfully to bring about political change. Because this event is so close to home and affected my friends personally, and it would be unfair of me to start talking about how, look, look closer at this, look closer at that. But I do have certain groups where I'm able to talk about it. I have groups on Facebook of like-minded people like myself where we're able to discuss at this, look at the anomalies, and share information. I go by Sidethorn, and this is Conspiracy Granny. And uh, what we do is we go to these false flag hoaxes and we prove them wrong. Uh, this story, they supposedly 26 victims were shot and killed inside the church by a lone gunman. It's a false narrative, fake, never happened. And we'll show you how that never happened. Well, what initially happened was that Devin Kelly, the, a shooter, came into the the church property, fired through the walls, then went into the church and shot a whole lot of folks to where uh, 26 passed away and there was 23 survivors. My daughter was in there. I lost Annabelle and uh, many of my very good friends was in there as well. We lived directly across the street from the uh, church. I was changing my oil, and I look over, and I see a guy with a AR-15 in full class three body armor uh, shooting at the front of the church. And I have actually was shot at uh, three times. They hit right there, and it came across, and it went through right here, 
and then it went through where I'm remodeling, it went through right here. You know, my son was right here. So he was within about a foot and a half, two feet of my son's head. All right, guys, we just want to show everybody that there's uh, no fixed bullet holes anywhere. No way was anything replaced. No bullet holes, no nothing. The issue of side thorns started about December 15th. There were several conspiracy theorists that had been coming around, not just him, and trying to deface the memorial, trying to harass people. This guy tried to say what we saw wasn't real, but the truth is is that we weren't paid. We're not crisis actors. It happened. My sister, my nieces fucking died. There's no evidence. There is no evidence showing that they are dead at all, that they even existed. What? I'm going to have all those bodies exhumed. That means I'm going to have them dug up. Do you understand? The fact that he calls the victims and harasses people who lost their daughters, their moms, their dads, their grandmothers, I just can't explain why any human being would be this way. People didn't get to see the dead bodies. Everything was tightly closed, and they cleaned up very, very fast because of how horrific it was. And I think that's what leads to people thinking it didn't happen. Attention, Sutherland Springs. We are offering a $100,000 reward for proof of death for any of these supposed victims. There have been a few people who've reached out and offered to show death certificates and birth certificates and stuff. I don't think he really wants proof and I don't think he's gonna give you $100,000 for it either. You will not threaten the truth. You will bow down to the truth. There's been more of these false flag operations. They're called psychological operations. They're by the Department of Homeland Security, and they're being forefront by the FBI. That's who's controlling the narrative on these, and they're working with crisis actors. We were right there by the car, by the gas pump three. Again, and we heard the shots go off again, and that's when we saw that he was standing out there shooting at the building. The side thorn had been coming by the store. That's when he started accusing that I was in with the FBI and this was all a conspiracy. I asked him to please leave. And he said, no, you need to verify this story. And I said, no, sir, I'm not verifying anything because it's not true. And he kept on insisting. Exposed that this was a drill? Right. This is no damn drill. This was evil. How, how do you know if anybody was actually killed? You cannot bother me with this anymore. Okay. I lost my loved ones, and I lost all my friends, and I witnessed this evil thing. And whatever conspiracy thing or whatever crap that is out there... You mean the truth? It's crap. It's not the truth. A scripted play. That's exactly what every one of them are. They're scripted. It, it's not possible for them to prove a single one that we've looked into. Not a one. But we go to everyone in Texas just to confirm what we already know to be true, and then there's no doubt about it when we get there. That's what I'm saying. It's a fact. We, we, we want y'all to go look at the bullet holes that aren't there. A portion of hoaxers have uh, no problem with targeting victims, and they don't care if they're hurting people. They feel that they are absolutely in the right and that these are the villains in this big, you know, multiplayer online game, and, and they're part of the good guys, so they have no concern. My son was murdered at the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. As a result of that event, online conspiracy theories started to brew. I see it as I stood my ground for the most part and everyone took a few steps back. And so when you look at this online issue, I'm visible, but I'm incorporated in their narrative. So whenever I'm videoed, I don't want to be recognizable or easily found, so I, I try to remain a couple of steps removed. There's almost nothing different in the conspiracy theories relating to the Parkland shooting. The Hoaxer playbook is immediately finding any inconsistency in any footage that's being shown online and then freeze framing it and drawing circles and lines and arrows on it and claiming that this is fake, that's staged, this person is practicing their lines. They want to scare us. They want to make us feel unsafe. Television is the David Hogg channel now. He's on everywhere. 
and I know scripted PR when I hear it. One of them went into a bathroom in the same, I believe, in the same hallway as the shooter. Oh, hold on. Okay. One of them went into the same bathroom, I believe, as the hallway shooter. That's called a sound bite. And I was re-saying my sound bites to sound as eloquent as possible. I wasn't reciting my lines, I was reciting my heart. I mean, it is incredible, though, to watch fake news in action. I mean, this, this is how you murder the truth. And I don't know if David Hogg understands this. He probably doesn't. I tweeted the lovely man that is Alex Jones. I wanted to come on and actually debate him. But then I realized some of the stuff that he was saying, which was the exact same stuff that he said about the Sandy Hook survivors, saying that they were actors. Then we see footage of one of the reported fathers of the victims, Robbie Parker, doing classic acting training where he's laughing and joking and they say hey we're live and he goes oh <laughs> and maybe that's real i'm sure it is he's doing that exact same stuff and knowing that he had done that before i wasn't going to give him the time of day we didn't say you were a crisis actor and believe this happened we just pointed out that you're an admitted actor and journalism student and said that you're anti-gun and that you're being fed talking points alex jones was probably the first one that created the narrative of sandy hook victim dies again in 2015, there was a uh, school tragedy in Peshawar, Pakistan, where uh, the Taliban had killed 150 people. And uh, Noah's image appeared on the school grounds during vigils. And you know, perhaps they were trying to say, you know, we, f we kind of feel your pain. We have the same tragedies that happen. That InfoWars short news article was then echoed thousands of times online. I'm the administrator, one of the administrators for the Sandy Hook hoax Facebook page. And Lenny Posner, one of these supposed parents of a victim at Sandy Hook, Noah Posner, he's certainly been determined to quell any information regarding the Sandy Hook incident. And of course, it's disguised by he's a poor victim who wants to preserve the legacy of his child. His child has no fucking, le his child has no legacy. Nobody cares about this kid, and this, this kid is a flash in the pan. Sandy Hook is years behind us now. The only people that care about it are the people that want the truth. I mean, who, who wouldn't point this out? I mean, is the Pakistan bombing fake? I mean, one of these two is fake. There's, there's a large profit in this, so we know that Alex Jones makes upwards of $50 million a year spreading this type of insanity. So what used to be very, very remote has now picked up traction. Come on, Coke. My name is Wolfgang Helbig, and I'm a national school safety consultant. So with Sandy Hook, what I call it, it's an illusion. It's all about misdirection. It's all about misinformation. They want you to chase all of this stuff, look here, look there. It's an illusion. What's your bottom line? What do you think really happened at Sandy Hook? I can tell you children did not die. Teachers did not die on December 14, 2012. It just could not have happened. This event generated attention for him, and this is his retirement hobby, to harass victims, harass the Connecticut government with repeated information requests for things that don't exist or that they can't provide, and then saying, uh -huh. I'm over here asking questions on why no trauma helicopters. Sandy Hook is only 10 minutes from a large hospital in the area. The trauma helicopter would have taken an hour to get there. Why no paramedics? Wolfgang goes around claiming that there were no EMTs, and it's been disproven. But he keeps saying that, and it gets repeated. And his followers never fact check. They're looking at me as a conspiracy nut, you know, mental health issues. I mean, yeah. if I am wrong, I will guarantee you this, that I will voluntarily, immediately enroll myself in a mental health long-term facility. I can't hurt people. That's not my nature. And these mass casualty shootings have a huge impact on our emotions, on our hearts, and how we think. And they're using, you know, this gun mechanism as the driving force. I mean, no matter what state you're in, guns, gu it's all about guns, new legislation. See, and I think there has been so much misinformation given by the national news 
now even the President of the United States. I mean, he publicly comes out and calls them out as fake news. A certain portion, 25% of the population, is easily uh, convinced of things, especially if it's being told to them by someone who they respect and trust. And once hoaxers keep narrowing their information feed of news, then they're not getting any other information other than these very, very paranoid type ideas. This is what I do. I, uh, I spend anywhere from two to six hours a day updating and monitoring stuff on the Sandy Hook Hoax Facebook page. The Facebook page is an online meeting place for all of these dysregulated people. They post images of victims and of children and people related to tragedies, and Facebook has not done anything to deal with this hate group. I also look at other posts. Mom of anti-gun poster boy reports threats to FBI. Rebecca Baldrick says she contacted the FBI this week because the threats against her family have continued to appear on Facebook. What does that mean? Continue to appear on Facebook. What, is she scrolling through Facebook looking for a threat? How does a threat appear on Facebook? Does that make sense to you? Poor Mrs. Baldrick, mother of David Hogg, who's not even a victim. He's a spokesperson. So poor David Hogg, his mother, is being threatened on Facebook. I looked at my account and it said I had like 172 comments. And I normally have four. Most of them have been very general and just kind of hurtful. But there was one that talked about David's birthday and that he's going to be killed on his birthday. And that really, really bothered me. And I notified the FBI. This man, my friends have just gone after, which seems to be the most effective strategy. So his friends and neighbors know that he is harassing victims of the Douglas shooting. And that's just, it's just ridiculous that he thinks that he can put all this out there on Facebook and we're just gonna lay down and take it. Well, let me tell you, you fucked with the wrong mama bear. I don't question myself. I don't, and I'm also a good person. I don't question my morality. I've always been good to people. I don't do what I do and, and to hurt anyone, you know? They want to know, what if you're wrong? Oh, I'm going to be so sorry and apologetic to everyone. And it's like, what if water's not wet, OK? What if the sky's not blue? Well, I think it'll get a lot worse. They are turning these conspiracy ideas against people, against victims. And that's a very dark evolution. Right now, the internet is a largely unregulated space. We've seen the empowerment of the mentally ill and the mentally ill ideas have been spreading. Let's go show them the sign that they scratched out our name, because I got a bigger marker this time. Hey, tone it down. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're going to show you where we where we are. Hey. Hey, hey, well, look at this, guys. Hey, there's Mr. Palmer. Are you working on electric? I am. Frank Pomeroy. I am. Yeah, I've been waiting on this day, so I can Hey, come on, guys, come on, guys. Come on my property. There we go. We Good. knew this had to come one day. Did you hear that, guys? Did you hear that? He's, he's that asked telling us we're not welcome on his property. That's Why is that, Frank? Because we've already... Wait, I need to give Frank a new flyer anyway, man. Yeah, you do that. This is the pastor of the church, guys. Since I'm on the... The field. main player. The main player in this charade. Yeah. Because I've already had to deal with one person that didn't have a full grasp on reality. And we're scared to deal with another person that doesn't have a graph. We got Frank, a Frank, Frank, would you like to put that in uh, writing, sir, and take a polygraph right now for $100,000? One, I don't think you have $5. Oh, ho, 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 Frank, now you've got the you evidence? No different. You got the evidence? Than, than the man who came and shot. D no guy. one came to this you place, you no lying different. sack of shit, government motherfucking sellout, you bitch. No you're a demon, Frank. And you're a. You're a demon. You're and a I represent the righteousness of God. And you're a sissy demon. with a big mouth. You're a demon. The only way that I could get a trespassing warning placed against him was I had to formally warn him by voice. I had to engage with him. And so for the last month, we have been trying to, to catch him and him not see us coming because he would run if he knew we were coming. I'm supposing he did not realize it was me inside the, the vehicle that he walked up by. 
and I was able to get out, engage him, and told him that he was no longer welcome on the property. From there, he just got loud and and uh, just uh, degrading. The reality is you don't have a photograph of a victim. You don't have any death certificates. You don't have any birth certificates. You don't have shit, Frank. So That's the reality of this. So you're saying my daughter wasn't born? Daughter? Where is she, man? And it wasn't your daughter, you actor. How long you been involved here? See, this right here shows you are not even remotely close to reality. Prove it, you dumb fuck. That is yep. the troll tactic to attack the Everybody, individual. Everything but the truth, everything the but the facts. You ain't got hey, nothing. Hey, 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 hey. This man has made real threats. He's reaching out to people who are already going through a PTSD and are grieving and emotionally just hurting. It's not your First Amendment to threaten people. You're a sellout bitch that's getting paid, man. And you know what? You just right. can't handle that I'm going to expose you motherfuckers for what you are until the people hang you by the neck, man. You're going to hang, traitor. That I assure you. Adam Young, Let me talk. Do not touch me. Let me talk. Do you understand that? I haven't touched you. I have a right to make a citizen's arrest on any law enforcement officer that puts their fucking hands on me. me Do you talk. understand that's assault? Do you understand? Let me talk. No, you tell me you understand I have the right as a citizen to make a citizen's arrest, yes or no? Let me yes talk. or no? Let me talk. Yes or no? Hey, there you go. Turn, hey. Turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Did you? Put your hands behind your back. Now, what am I being arrested for? Criminal trespassing. Quit resisting. Criminal trespassing. You, you see him resisting. hit me in the back? You see him hit me in the back? You see him hit me in the back? You got the truck? He didn't do anything, man. What are you doing? He didn't go, don't, don't resist. Even though everyone knew, all the law enforcement knew that this had the possibility of getting violent until there was some type of infraction. There was no way to stop it. Now, luckily, yesterday, what happened happened without no one getting hurt. And this is the catalyst to get things rolling to where maybe now he will leave the victims alone at least. Okay. We'll be back, Frank. We'll be back. You count on that, Frank. You're not ever getting rid of the truth, Frank. In the past, I've called hoax theory a thought virus. There are people that benefit from these hoax theories, so they don't mind them because the hoax theories are pushing back against gun control. So it's there, and people have been infected with it. The only time over the past five years that I've felt like <sighs> I might want to just step away from this investigation as when I realized how much of my life it's consumed, right? For the past five years, uh, part of my life has been stolen with the hours and hours that I've invested into this research. And it's taken away from my life and my ability to be a good parent to my child. It's obsessive, you know? But I believe what I have experienced and what I know to be true. And the evidence that I've seen repeatedly points to the fact that this is contrived events that are not genuine. was right so that these people were still here. That's what hurts so bad is like, you keep telling us that these people didn't die, that they just moved or something and it's not true. And as much as we would all wish that, one, we were getting paid by the government, but two, we were getting our family members back like they never left us. It's just not how it goes. Part of the reason why I spoke up so soon after wasn't because I was mentally stable, wasn't because I felt like I had grieved enough. I hadn't. I still haven't. People grieve in different ways. And I think David was more active through his grief. I'm not sure he's processed it yet, but I think that's how he's dealing with it. This right here is where we had her last birthday party, was sitting right here. Uh, and her friends came, and I cooked hot dogs right there on that grill you're standing beside right there for. Uh, for her last bar birthday party here. Absolutely.